uh, this is section 2.4. We're going to focus on equations and inequalities. And our essential question is how do you tell the difference between an expression, an equation, and an inequality? Okay, so let's start with a little bit of background. When we talk about expressions, they're very different things than equations. You guys know that I tell you all the time that language matters. So you have to know what it means when I say look at the expression. So expressions are made up of basically three things, constants, variables, and operations. So remember, constants are just numbers like 3 or negative 2 or whatever. Variables, of course, are letters that represent unknown quantities like x or maybe a or maybe even 3x could be a variable term. And then, of course, our operations are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So an example of an expression might be 3x plus 2. We have a variable term, we have an operation, and we have a constant. We could have um, 5x over 4 minus 9. That is also an expression. We've got a variable, we've got division, we've got subtraction, we've got a constant. Even if you just had negative 4, you could even consider that an expression. Even though it doesn't have a variable, um, it's just a constant. So that's part of what makes up an expression. Now equations are different. Equations have to have two equal expressions. So an equation might look something like this. Instead of just 3x plus 2, I have 3x plus 2 equals 5. Or 5x over 4 minus 9 equals negative 4x plus 1. So we always must have an equal sign when we're looking for an equation. Okay? So look for that equal sign. That's the difference really between what makes something an expression and what makes something an equation. When we talk about inequalities, very, very similar to equations, but this time we're looking for two expressions that are not equal to each other. So we have the four inequality symbols. We have less than, so the left side is less than the right side. Greater than, left is greater than the right. Less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So maybe you have an inequality like 4x plus 2 is less than 5. The left side is not equal to the right side, but it's smaller than or less than the right side. Or maybe you have 5x over 4 minus 9 is greater than or equal to 7. Or maybe it's even something complicated like 7x plus 2. So those are our inequalities. So we want to focus on how do you tell the difference between an expression, an equation, and an inequality, either based on what you see in the math or what you hear in the language. All right, one thing we have to do with both equations and inequalities is check to see if an equation is true or false. It's true if the left is equal to the right. If the left is not equal to the right, then the equation is false. So if we take this first example, 3 equals 8 minus 5, well, that is true because, of course, 8 minus 5 is equal to 3. If you look at the second example, negative 4 equals 6 plus 2, this equation is false because, of course, 6 plus 2 is 8, and negative 4 is not equal to 8. So that equation would be false. We can do the same kind of thing with an inequality. If the left meets the condition that's compared to the right, so in other words, if you meet the condition of the inequality symbol there, then the inequality is true. So for example, in the first one, 2 is less than or equal to 8. That's true because, of course, 2 is smaller than Eight. If you look at the second example, 3 is greater than 9, that's false because, of course, 3 is smaller than 9. So that's just a check to make sure our equations and our inequalities are either true or false. Knowing whether they're true or false is important for us to be able to check to see if something is a solution. Okay, so when we plug in um, a value for a variable into an equation or an inequality, that statement will either be true or false. In other words, the equation or the inequality will be a true or false. If it's true, then we say that that value is 
a solution. Sometimes there's one solution to an equation, sometimes there's more than one. Oftentimes there's more than one solution to an inequality. So let's look at an example. Is 2 a solution to the equation 4x plus 1 equals 9? So to do that, we want to replace the variable with the value. So this would become 4 times 2 plus 1 equals 9. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 plus 1 is equal to 9. 9 equals 9. So 2 is a solution. If you look at the next example, is 3 a solution to that same equation? This time, we're not so lucky. If we do 4 times 3 plus 1, we want to check to see if that equals 9. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. 13 does not equal 9. So 3 is not a solution to that equation. Let's do one with an inequality. Is x equal 4 a solution to the inequality x plus 5 is greater than 11? So let's just start with writing the inequality. Now let's replace our value of x. We'll evaluate. So 4 plus 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 is not greater than 11, so you might want to put a slash to that. So no, 4 is not a solution. A lot of times I'll abbreviate solution with S-O-L-N. So you might want to write that down because we have to know what our abbreviations mean. S-O-L-N is our abbreviation for solution, and I'll use that quite a bit. Um, throughout the year. Okay, let's just do one more example. In this case, let's use mental math to solve this equation and then let's check to see if our answer is in fact a solution. So we have the equation 2 equals 6 minus x. So if you think about this as 2 equals 6 minus a number, 6 minus what number equals 2? Well, I know that 6 minus 4 is equal to 2. So, x must equal 4. Now, if we wanted to check to see if 4 was a solution, this is a rather simple example, but we just plug it into the equation, simplify both sides, 2 is equal to 2. So, yes, x equals 4 is my solution. All right, and so these are the types of problems that we'll be working with in this next section, identifying something is an expression equation or inequality, um, determining if an equation or an inequality is true or false, checking to see if something is a solution, and using a little bit of mental math to solve some simple equations. Okay, so you know the deal that's next. Do your summary, do your left-hand column questions, and bring those to class.